baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Come on, let's lift our hands all over this building. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, uh, I, I, I'm going to be careful. It's, 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 uh, it, it ain't even... Uh, one o'clock yet I'm not going to preach I am going to talk to you and I, I, I'm going to obey God and I'm going to talk to you very frankly and, uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you standing here right now today I have no friends and I have no enemies I just have something from God and it, 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 it's uh, it, it's no doubt that Brother Pondexter had heard from God I, uh, I don't say this braggingly yet, but I was just so troubled in my spirit and just uh, just knowing God has something more not for just this meeting but for our movement and feeling even some of the same frustrations that I heard bleed through in Brother Poindexter's preaching uh, and I appreciate them letting me in last night but I got to this church about midnight and uh, I left when the cleaning ladies got here about 5.45 this morning and they turned on these lights and God put this on my heart and I, I don't want you to stay and I just want to I just want to remind you that when Paul would write to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 he, he, he talked he started off talking about do we not know that the saints shall judge we're we're, we're people who are in positions that require responsibility. And, and he would talk about, have you not heard me read, preach, teach that we're going to judge angels? So if that's what we're going to do one day, how much more important is us in the right now to judge what's going on with man? See, see what you've heard today as a man of God that's empowered with the Holy Ghost that one day the angels are going to be judged. He obeyed God when He took the issues of man. And He began to judge right now issues. And, and I, just, I just want to inject this. There's a difference and being critical and God sending correction. Don't you ever confuse the two. Now, I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but when, when we start talking about criticism and sitting around the table, there's always two groups that usually jump up. It's young preachers and carnal saints. I'm going to say that again. When anybody talks about, don't say anything critical. Don't, don't, don't. We're, we're our brother's keeper. I believe everything you said. But there's a difference in criticism and correction. And I'm going to tell you, when my man of God sits me down, I don't care who you are if he's talking about you to me. He's not being critical of you. He's trying to correct and help me. And there's a difference in criticism and correction. And young man, you listen to me. I'm still a young man, but I'm talking to some younger men. If you're not careful, you, you, you will try to blur, blur the lines of somebody being critical and somebody just trying to correct something that they see is going to shipwreck you some later down years in life. The Bible says he chastens them that he loves. He don't criticize them. He corrects them. He wants them to get it fixed. He wants to... And 
And th- th- this, is, this is what the Apostle Paul, he would go on to talk about, you can't be unrighteous, idolaters, fornicators, all these things. Then I like it. He stops. He says, and such were some of you. And then, and then he goes on. And finally, he, he, he gets right down to what he was after. He says, let me tell you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. And ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. And I want you to notice again, he instructs and tells, these no longer belong to you. These are God's. And, and though I didn't have the substance several weeks ago in prayer and, and God's blessing our church I'm so thankful for the wonderful people I pastor good men here with me today my best man my main man my Brant's with me and uh, you, you forgive me if I don't go through all the protocol you know I love you brother Mayo respect you honor you I want anybody to think uh, but several weeks ago in, in all that was going on and, uh, it, it's, it's really it's amazing what God's doing in our local assembly we baptized right at it, it's a little over I should have took the time to count but over 20 people in the last month out of the assembly of God church and, uh, people getting the Holy Ghost it, it, it's not us it's God our church can no longer say they hadn't seen miracles. Last Sunday night, a man that was blind received his sight. Not, I'm not talking about they had a little back pain and they. Let me tell you, this Holy Ghost still empowers you. This Holy Ghost will still give you dominion. And I know there's a lot of preachers that they want to get critical when we talk about dominion, but dominion is still a Bible word. God told Abraham, everywhere you put your feet, don't worry about where somebody else is putting their feet, but everywhere you put your feet, it's going to be yours. Uh, If you're bold enough to step into it, I'm bold enough to step into it with you. And, uh, And I thought, man, this is incredible all that's going on it, it, it's not just been the last month it's been a season uh, our church has over doubled uh, we're, we're, we're not just baptizing people and then you can't find them with a search warrant uh, and, uh, they're in Bible studies and new convert classes and, and let me tell you don't ever underestimate the power of just one person inviting one person we invited one young lady matter of fact brother Roger Duncan that's here with me today he and brother Chad his father-in-law invited the young lady from a seafood restaurant in town about a month about a year and a half ago devout devout assembly of God her matter of fact she about got disowned and uh, (laughs) but when she's seen it she's seen it and she got the Holy Ghost and now I think 23 people of her family are in church with her service after service after service now let me just tell you if God can do it in Generac God can do it and you just put the name of your city on it but it, it, it began to just it was like and even in my thanksgiving God just kind of stopped me and I, I've sobered up very quickly and this is what I just want to talk to you just a, just a moment and uh, I appreciate you're an obedient young man I said I don't care how long I talk don't stop playing unless I tell you somebody said well why is that you, you, you do understand that if we're not careful if we don't do our own homework we get to thinking a lot of this is tradition. But when an evil spirit would come into the presence and begin to trouble God, Saul, God sent an anointed musician before he sent a word, and the music would drive out the evil spirit. 
so that anointed man without fear of his life could deliver his message. I'm going to tell you that, 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 that there's some people, young and old, you need to understand that what we're doing ain't tradition, it's Bible. Sort of like I don't preach against faded jeans, ripped knees, and sitting on a bar stool because I have been raised traditionally to stand behind a pulpit. This ain't a Pentecostal thing. When the temple was getting ready to be rebuilt, Ezra told them, get me a platform. Because when I give the word of God, they need to be looking up to me. I'm not giving the word of God down on their level. And get me a pulpit made of wood that I can put that word on. And I'm going to stand behind that pulpit and I'm going to read that word. And then I'm going to explain that word. And what you're doing ain't just tradition. The Bible says, and the people were commanded to stand to their feet, to lift their hands, to bow their head and shout amen. Can I tell you, it's not a Pentecostal thing. It's not a your favorite preacher thing. It's a responsibility to have a revival singers that can sway and dance and sing and the man of God get to preaching on one guy like brother Urshan did last night and you better stand to your feet girl you better stand to your feet young man we ain't begotten by your singing we're begotten by the word oh yeah say you don't know where you're at I know just where I'm at I'm in the Holy Ghost but tell you, not, not wanting a preacher to raise his voice and wanting everybody just sit quietly on the pew and just soak it in as if intellect's ever helped. Paul said, you want to talk about intellect? I was more intellect than every one of you. But when I come to you and I needed a breakthrough, I, I didn't come with enticing words uh, and intellect. Uh, I didn't come to you saying, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. Uh, he said, I'll tell you what I came in. Uh, I came in power uh, and in demonstration uh, of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, when your preacher gets to preaching, uh, if you want revival in your family, uh, you stand to your feet, you raise your hands, uh, you bow your head, uh, and you shout amen, uh, you shout amen, uh, you shout amen. Uh. If a young brother Pondexter uh, gets to preaching something that's pricking your heart, don't you push it away and sit there with your arms folded. Uh, stand to your feet. Raise your hands. Uh, bow your head. Uh, shout amen. Uh, it's not a Pentecostal thing. Uh, it's not a radical thing. Uh, it's a Bible thing. You sit down. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. God started dealing with me. He said, there's responsibilities that comes with redemption. There's rights that come with redemption. You no longer have to be the tail. You can be the head. You no longer have to be cursed. You can be blessed coming in and blessed going out. And blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You, you, you no longer have to learn to just deal with things. You, you are empowered to overcome. And that, that, you, you listen to me, Pentecost. We, 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 we've let some silver tongue orators convince people. Well, that's, that's, that's just who you are and you'll get your reward once you're over there and you just have to keep dealing with that and if it takes you taking a few pills just to cope with... Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to get full of the Holy Ghost because you have a right. When John looked back to where we're at, he didn't say that he, these are those that are overcoming. Uh, he said these are those uh, that have overcome. Let me tell you, you're an overcomer. You don't have to learn to cope and medicate depression. Uh, you can get delivered from depression. Uh, you don't have to learn to coexist with fear. Uh, there's deliverance from fear. Uh, it's a right of the people of God. See, but see if we're not careful. If we're not careful, we learn we have to learn to deal with things because if you do not embrace your responsibilities, 
you lose your rights. Now, if my wife's listening on Holy Ghost Radio, she'll get mad, then she'll get tickled. It's kind of like driving. It's right. But you get enough tickets? <laughs> you just listen to me. You lose that right. And then you're having to do something that you don't have the authority to do. And, and if you get caught doing something in which you don't have the authority to do, they don't just write you out a $225 ticket. They say, uh, Mr. Jackson, could you step back here for just a moment, please? <sighs> But officer, you don't understand I'm a preacher. <laughs> this ain't going to look good if I get put in the paper. <laughs> Every good preacher's lost their driver's license. If you're here today, you ain't dr- lost your driver's license. You just ain't a good enough preacher. You need to get the spirit of Jehu on you. <laughs> But see, there's responsibilities to having that right. And God, God told Israel, he said, you you can't get out of this by yourself. You've been trying for 430 years. And and even when you try to respond to some word, it costs you more than what you was doing. But I'm going to grant you some rights. I'm going to deliver you up out of this land. But God doesn't ever deliver anybody out of something that he doesn't have something to deliver them into. Don't get lost in the wilderness because it was. He told Moses, he said, I'm going to give you, 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 you're not big enough. You're not bad enough to conquer what I'm going to give you. But I'm going to give you, you you read it over and over. He didn't say you're going to take. He said, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards you didn't plant. I'm going to give you wells that you didn't dig. Moses, I'm going to give you some rights because you're the people of God. But don't you think that there's not some responsibilities involved. And if you ever forget about your responsibilities, it's going to cause you to lose your rights. And you might coast along doing something that you don't really have the power to do for a little while. But eventually, you're going to get pulled over and somebody's going to recognize they don't have the authority to walk in this. I know that they had it back at the Red Sea. And this, this, this just, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm going to just, I ain't almost through, but I'm going to stop. Maybe. This, this is one, this has been so on me, for me, okay? So you just, you just spectate me preaching to me. One of the greatest responsibilities that he ever gave them is he said, don't ever forget that you were a slave in Egypt. And when you get the cornrows cut, And you can get jewelry out your ears and God blesses you and you sharp can put initials on your sleeves. Come here, man. And I'm going to tell you, there's preachers who think they can preach and then there's preachers that can just preach. uh, He said, when you're walking in dominion and you're walking in authority, and now that you pastor coming on the platform and putting his arms around you instead of you staggering up and putting your arms around him, and that anointing's flowing, and you know you had a word from God, 
And there was a boldness that only comes through consecration and dedication and praying and fasting uh, and saying, nevertheless, not my will be done. Uh, he said, let me tell you what will get you in trouble. Uh, you can keep those rights as long as you just maintain your responsibility. Uh, but the only way you're going to maintain the responsibility uh, is you don't ever forget, uh, I hadn't always been where I am. Uh, and I didn't get here by myself. Uh, and I didn't get here by my own. Uh, and I didn't do anything to deserve where I'm at. Uh, I was in Egypt. You know what the problem is in our movement right now? And there's revival happening, and there's power, and there's anointing, but there's also a struggle going on. You know why? Because we've arrived at the place where we think we're in. Titled, uh, that God owes us something. Uh, who are you, old man? Uh, that God owes you anything. Uh, you were in Egypt. Uh, you were carrying bricks uh, and building houses you were never going to get to live in. Uh, you were digging ditches uh, for water you were never going to get to drink. Uh, you were plowing fields uh, for vineyards you were never going to get to eat. Is that okay, Brother Herbert Dean? He just, matter of fact, why don't you come with us too? Come on. Uh, you know why he's anointed? It's transferred. You know why he's prophetic? It's transferred. Let me just inject this. It can't get transferred uh, unless the younger is in alignment with the elder. See? Everybody but these two can be seated. <laughs> See, I feel like I could just take on the world with y'all two right now. I mean, I could do it just like... Come on. See, let me tell you what happens when you forgot you was in Egypt. You forget that God didn't need you, but you needed God. And all of a sudden, you forget... That it was a man of God that preached me out of Egypt. And if you forget about that, then you start getting bent out of shape when he tries to preach you out of pride. And if you forget that it took preaching to preach you out of Egypt, and you forget how lost and how messed up and mixed up you were, you get aggravated uh, when he starts preaching correction uh, into your life. Well, who does he think he is? We're, I'm going to tell you who he thinks he is. He thinks he's the man of God that's been raised up for such a time as this. And you may one day, and I don't believe you will, but you may one day forget what kind of condition you come in. But let me tell you who won't ever forget it. The man of God that put his hands on you the very first time. Uh, and has seen something in you that you didn't see in yourself. Uh, and he recognized an anointing flowing over you uh, that you had never even felt. Uh, I've got to tell somebody, uh, you can't forget where you come from. Uh, it don't matter where you're at. Uh, you got to remember where you come from. Uh, you were a slave in Egypt. Come here, Brett. Yeah, I want y'all to put hands on my boy while we preach. I tell my son regularly, I said, you, 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 you don't even have no idea. You don't even have no idea how living above our means we really are right now. Because there's parts of my testimony my boy can't even handle at the age he's at. There's things God had to pick me up out of and things God had to put back together up. And just because I get to wearing some nice shoes and nice clothes and driving nice cars and have enough money to go anywhere in the world I want to go, uh, if I ever get to thinking uh, I'm entitled to all this uh, and I forget uh, that I was in Egypt, uh, let me tell you what will happen. Uh, I won't go back to Egypt, but my boy will end up in Babylon. I won't go 
back to Pharaoh, but my boy will be under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. I won't go back to making bricks, but he'll get to the place where he has to hang up his harp. I've come to tell somebody, I don't care where you're at. I don't care how mightily God's using you. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care what you're achieving for the kingdom. You were lost. You were lost. You were lost. You couldn't get to where you're at. God delivered you. See, and uh, I'm gonna just y'all don't blame us on Brother Mayo. This is James Wesley. I take responsibility for every bit of it. Sit down. Sit down. If you ever forget you was in Egypt, you ever forget you was in Egypt. Stay right up here. You ever forget you was in Egypt? Ooh. You'll start singing your own praises instead of letting it come from another. I'm too, uh, I'm too holy for Instagram, but I snoop on my wives. So, uh, it's because I may not have control of what I would say if I had my own, but I have enough fear of Alicia Danielle to say something stupid and it be under her name. So, I, I never thought we'd see a day. You, you, you can get upset at me if you want to for this, but you just, you need to, you need to take it up with God or you come wear me out and take it. If you say something worthy of being repeated, you don't have to put your own clip on Instagram. Somebody else will put it on there for you. See, it's people that forgot they were bound in Egypt that they get to thinking that they have the authority to preach to the world oh yeah oh yeah and I know you, 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 you create a little church account and, but we know it's you because you repost it on your account after the church account posts it You know what? When you remember you as in Egypt, you're just happy to be at the party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't get upset. Just re- before you get upset at the word coming forth, you remember how you come staggering in. Uh, and it was just as confrontational of a word when the preacher looked at you and said, you can't go to heaven in that condition. Uh, but because you was burned with Egypt, uh, you didn't get mad. You obeyed. Uh, and so today, if the preacher gets this just that controversial, uh, it has nothing to do with the word. Uh, it's you forgot what it was like to be on the streets. Uh, you forgot what it was like to have condemnation eating you up from the inside out. You forgot what it was like to be in that dysfunction uh, and thinking about committing suicide uh, because you didn't think it could ever get any better. uh. But when you ever reach back to Egypt uh, and say I'm just so happy I'm out of that. uh, Y'all still okay hanging with me? Oh, my God. You can be seated. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If you forget what it was like to be in Egypt, you'll lose compassion on Egypt. And I got two good men of my church here, really God's church that I'm just overseeing bunch of prayer warriors that have prayed and are listening to Holy Ghost Radio but they'll tell you I preach just like this at home if you don't think social media and Facebook and all that's a big deal I have people in my community that won't come to our church because of arguments 
that saints of God got in with Egyptians. Let me tell you, you don't, if you're in the kingdom, you don't need to use social media to proclaim your political stance. We're not sold out to American culture. We're sold out to kingdom culture. And I'm more, I'm more concerned about winning the loss than building our economy. I'm more worried about winning the loss than somebody coming that we don't think should be here and don't get dumbed down to doing something that the enemy can use I'm going to tell you he's a sly old fox and you know what? Why, how he's so slick about it we do it and don't even realize what we've done Brother Chad, do I preach just like this at home? Yeah. He said, you can't, you can't forget where you come from. He said, secondly, I've been compassionate to you and I want you to be compassionate to the stranger but 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 I'm not sending you there to learn how to coexist I'm sending you there to take over And if you don't drive them out and you think that you can make capital gain off of learning to coexist, he said, let me tell you who's going to end up making the money. It's going to be them because you're going to start off taxing them. But because you didn't listen and bear your responsibility, I'm going to take away your rights. And the people that I empowered you to drive out, now I'm going to get upset and empower them to take back over. Can I tell you, our doctrine was not meant to coexist with Trinitarians. Let me tell you, God didn't call me to have a dialogue. God called me to preach the word. A Trinitarian don't have anything to show me. He don't even understand one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And God didn't call me to coexist with him. God didn't call me to preach on Sunday uh, and have him teach a self-help class on Tuesday. Uh, let me tell you what God sent me to do, uh, to drive it out. God sent me to generate, to take every assembly of God person I can get, every Catholic that I can pray through, uh, every Jehovah Witness that I can convert. Uh, he sent me to drive them out. Uh, he didn't send me to coexist. Uh, he sent me to take over. Somebody said, you really naive enough to think you're going to win everybody there? I don't know, but I sure ain't going to stop till I die trying. Be seated. There's two more things, and you're going to be proud how quickly I skipped over that coexist because there's a lot you could say there. Thirdly, thirdly, you, oh, really play something anointed right here, okay? Re, get, re, no, I'm serious. I mean, come on, just a little bit better. At least close your eyes and shake your head. And, mm, go, mm. He said, I'm going to give you the land, but then you've got to give back out of what I give you. And I'm going to tell you, we've got way too many people that God's give to them. And they can't give to buy another van, but they can give to take another vacation and miss another Sunday service. Give 
give to feed some breakfast to some little black bus kids because I mean what do they have to offer but they'd be on two or three leases have two four wheel drives you know why God blesses us to be a blessing I'm going to tell you, I don't care what you think. There's enough money in this building right now to pay the note on several home mission storefronts uh, for the rest of the year. But if we ever forget where we come from, uh, we all of a sudden start thinking these blessings are about me. Uh, But no, God didn't bless me uh, so I could take another excursion. Uh, God blessed me uh, so I could see somebody else make it. Uh, So... I don't know what time dinner reservations are, but Wendy's is 24 hours. Can can I just talk to all the good tithe payers today? Is anybody here pay your tithe? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Do you know? Now I'm going to use the Bible because you're going to get aggravated enough me just using the Bible. Do you know when you pay your tithe... You have not given one thing to God. You have not given one thing to the kingdom of God. When you pay your tithe, you have not given one thing to the man of God. When you pay your tithe, all you did was not keep what was already God's and become a thief. Because over and over and over and over again, he said that belong to the Lord the first fruits are mine they're not yours if you keep them you're a thief and we got a lot of people paying 10% and it's a good 10% and so they think the preacher ought to just be happy and make everything work with that 10% baby you're going to lose your blessings you had give just when you give your 10% you got a feast of weeks. You've got a grain offering. You got a drink offering. You got a meat offering. You can't come to the house of God with an empty hand. You sit down. I'm kind of starting to feel like preaching more than just talk. You got a responsibility to give. Let me tell you, it matters not just that you give, it matters where you give. And I'm all about winning the world. And I love home missionaries and I love foreign missions. Matter of fact, it's none of your business who. But my son and I just yesterday took some a good little bit of cash. And then I'm wanting to put it in him, Brother Haddon. I could have went and handed it away. And I knew he was going to feel awkward doing it. But I said, Brent, you you see so-and-so? Yes, sir. I said, "Uh, take this up there and put it in their hand. Tell them don't share it with their husband, but go shopping with it. So I'm, I'm all about winning the world. But let me tell you, let me just, can I preach to Spokane? If you're a saint in Spokane, God didn't care, call you to win the world. He called you to win your world. And let me tell you where your giving needs to funnel through. It needs to funnel through Cornerstone Church. It don't need to be to a pity party that somebody gave on Instagram. It don't be, it need to be the solicitation that somebody gave on Facebook. It doesn't need to be to some cool website that you checked out and it said, click here to donate and give. Uh, let me tell you where you better give. You better give where you know is blessed uh, because God doesn't give blessing. Uh, just God doesn't bless just because you give. So sit down, sit down. I'm, I'm, God, you, you listen to me. I don't care what anybody tells you. They're wrong. I'm right because I'm in the Bible. God doesn't bless just because you give. It matters what you're given to. He told Abraham, you're blessed. And 
That's why I'm going to bless them that bless you. If you ever get unblessed, I'm not going to bless them just because they keep blessing you. Them getting blessed, it really don't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with the covenant that I made with you. And so if they bless what is blessed, I'm going to keep on blessing them. I'm going to keep on giving to them. I'm going to make them the head and not the tail. I'm going to make them above and not beneath. I'm going to bless them coming in. Bless them going out. But they've got a responsibility to bless what is hey. Yeah, you you getting there now. I like this. We're a good team. Be seated. And if you don't think it matters that you give it through the church. I was studying this, Brother Erson, because I was troubled. And because I don't think we are to preach anything that we can't back up with the Word. Don't tell me God told you something if you can't go find it right here. Because God didn't tell you anything that He can't be backed up right here. Or the... say God said all you want to say but if God if God really said it he's not using you to institute a new word he's just using you to confirm what's already been established and I knew that that the right way to do it was through the church but I just knew it because that's the way my daddy told me to do it but I knew when I get down to pray that I was right and I got to reading through that Bible. Woo. It's another thing. We need preachers that get back to just preaching the Bible. Reader's Digest had never saved anybody. You know why that preaching was so anointed today? Because it was Word. You know what made last night so powerful? Uh, there was no frills, uh, but it was so revelatory. I'm so in uh, It wasn't a story about this and a two-minute point about that. You know why? Because you got to preach the Word. Uh, the Word is like a hammer. Uh, your little story ain't like nothing uh, but a knocking stuff out of the way. Uh, but when you preach this Word, uh, it's like a hammer. Uh, it just keeps on keeping on. Uh, it just keeps on dividing. Uh, it just tell me what you heard on podcast tell me what you got in prayer out of the word Woo! y'all the only two I care about right now I'm okay because I got y'all up here <laughs> sit down I ain't Woo! is this okay bishop I come across a scripture thank you and y'all, this is a good man. After Brother Pondexter blew it up, he felt so sorry for me. He said, I'll just pay you. Let's just go on. And he said, I'm going to take good care of you. That's what you told me. He said, I'll make it right to you. Did that mean getting to preach another summit? Yes. Well, I ain't preaching today. I'm just talking. 2020, what's my... This no. is good preaching. I come across this scripture, Brother Urshan. I don't have my phone and Google right now. You can probably help me find it. He said, He said, when you when you got an offering, and in those days it was things that could spoil. He said, if the church is too far for you to get to without that spoiling, trade it in for money. And it's so important where you give it that you take that money and bind it on your hand and don't stop until you get to the altar uh, before the priest uh, and give it to him. If you don't think God cares where you give, uh, you better get back in that Bible. I'm going to tell you, 
I know we've got the IRS. I know we've got government. I know we've got all that. But let me tell you, uh, you hear me. Uh, there's still a blessing. Uh, and taking your gift uh, right to the man of God. Uh, and saying, will you ask God to receive this for me right now? Uh, and putting it in his hand. Uh, and him holding it up to heaven. Uh, and say, God, uh, in honoring your word. Uh, and in honoring your obedience. Uh, open windows of heaven. Uh, pour out blessings. Uh, that can't. Let me tell you. When you get the Sit down. You go for all you Bible scholars and Google gurus. He wasn't talking about tithe. He was talking about offering. And there's a lot of people give their tithe, and they don't understand why they're not being blessed. You need to go back and read that. Paying tithe provides you another blessing it just rebukes the devourer but what brings the blessings is when you give out of your substance you're not giving out of your substance when you pay your tithe you're just not stealing what already belongs to God but when out of your substance uh, you start putting it on the altar uh, you start putting it in the hands of the man of God uh, that's when he said uh, I'll open windows in heaven uh, I won't just rebuke the devourer uh, but I'll open windows in heaven uh, and I'll pour you out a blessing uh, if you want to be blessed uh, remember uh, God has blessed you uh, to be a blessing uh, you can give your way out of debt uh, you I will say it again. It don't make sense to Dave Ramsey. Uh, but you give your way out of debt. Uh, you can sacrificially give your way uh, into prosperity. Uh, can I tell you when you come to church uh, and the offering passes by, uh, it's not another arm twist. Uh, it's another opportunity to be blessed. Uh, it's another opportunity to say, come on, God. Come on. Can anybody shout about blessings right now? I just feel like pitching a little Holy Ghost fit about the blessings of God. I just feel like somebody is getting the revelation. I get... Spokane? Wait, wait. Oh, Jesus. Brother Booker, I love you. I'm glad you're here. That's a good man. That's a real good... Y'all don't know what he has to put up with. He's on a council that me and Brother Urshan's a part of. Y'all don't have any idea what he has to put up with. I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost sent me today... Holy Ghost sent me today. Show me one place. I'm, I would say I'm not against it, but I'd be lying. But I don't make an issue out of people who want to fundraise. And I know sometimes you don't see any other option. And man, at three foot tall and 225 pounds with husky rustlers on, and thighs that just, they wasn't enough room for both of them when I walked. I've sold thousands of bags of peanut brittle. But you know what? I've never seen the biggest peanut brittle seller in the church be the most blessed person in the church. They might be the pet of the church. You know why? Because God didn't send them to fundraise. God sent them to just keep giving back what I'm allowing you to get from the land. And if you just keep giving, I'll keep giving. And I don't care what kind of ordinances they have, you can build a new building. You. 
Because it ain't your work, it's God's work. It, I, don't, I don't care how much the building next door costs or what you could have bought it for 25 years ago. When you get a people that learn how to give, it's not a sit down and cry because we could have bought it for 500000 It's a shout and rejoice and say, look, we give over $2 million for it because of the blessings of God. I'll sit down so I can stop. Last thing I'm going to just talk about. He said, let me tell you something else. I am a jealous using the Holy Ghost, Brother Pondexter. I am a jealous God. I'm going to tell you, I'll just, I'll be transparent, Brother Prado. I love Brother Prado. Appreciate the work he's done, doing. I love you. Brother Prado, I got convicted. I kept from updating my phone as long as I could because I just don't like change. But finally, it wouldn't let me open like my Apple Music. So I had to update it. And the stupidest thing started happening. According to my flesh. It started keeping up with how many times I'd open it. And it started keeping up just not how much time I was spending on it because for it started keeping up, you know, I could be on it a little bit too long and my wife started giving me them eyes and I could start like, here is Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now just... <laughs> but see, it, just didn't, it didn't just start keeping up with how much time I was spending on it. It started keeping up with how much time I was spending on what while on it. And I got to compare what I was spending on that compared to what I was spending on these. And I thought, if God's really jealous, I better do some changing or I'm going to lose my rights. So you can get upset about a preacher talking about social media. But you just ought to see how many times you check it every day. You get mad at a preacher talking about Facebook, but you ought to just keep up with how much time you're spending on it every morning. You can get upset with us talking about phones, but you need to remember you got a responsibility, and that responsibility is never forget. I'm a jealous God. And when you get to messing with anything more than you're messing with me, I'm going to step back and say, well let's see how you do it by yourself I'm going to tell you I I told Brother Shoemake this yesterday I said I'm I'm scared to death you want to be seated I said I'm scared to death I didn't really get into all the why I'm scared but I'll, I'll tell everybody why I'm scared I've got it so good that there's absolutely no way I can keep it going like this. No way. It is what is happening in, happening in our local church. I testify about it, but you think I was bragging and the rest of you think I was lying. It's just, it's unbelievable. It, it, it really is. I know you do. You've been there and, 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 and right where we're at digging something out. And, and I'm going to tell you why this is, these responsibilities are still, so weighing on me. Because it's like a, is, is the Jenga puzzle, is that the right word? Those where you pull out those. See, not only can I not keep it together, Brother Roger, I tell you why I've been preaching like I'm preaching at home. 
not only do I not have the ability to keep it together, but my hands are too clumsy to pull out even just one little thing and it stays standing. And never have I realized more than right now what the writer was talking about when he said it's not just if God builds the city the laborers are in vain, but unless God keeps the city, you stay up watching all night for nothing. And I'm just going to tell you, I like these blessings too much to get God upset at me. I mean, I kind of like, I kind of like just teaching Bible study. I've taught the same Bible study on Tuesday night several weeks in a row. Somebody said, can't you get something different? They sing the same course about every other Sunday night. But I'll tell you why I keep teaching it. Because the first time I taught it, we baptized seven. Say, well, what was you teaching? I just opened up the Bible and I started teaching Acts 2.38 and Acts 4.12 and Acts 8. and Acts. So simple. I'm going to tell on you, Calvary, those of you that are listening. And I'll say it right in the presence of Brother Chad and Brother Roger. So simple that the first time I taught it, there was a lot of... All that changed when them seven went down that water. The next Tuesday night, Brother Earth and I taught the same thing. And the same people was going... I couldn't even hardly teach it. I had to start preaching it. Because they was on their feet and they was cutting. And when I got through teaching it, we took some more to the water. They come up speaking in tongues. And I taught it again. And I had a man in our, that's from our community. He said, I'll never be Pentecostal. I'm never going to that church. Devout assembly of God. I got through teaching it again. He come up to me after church. He said, Pastor, I just got one question. I said, well, what's that? He said, I've got a question about Matthew chapter 18. I said, no, you don't. He said, what do you mean? I said, you've got a question about Matthew 28, 19. I said, and I ain't scared of that neither. Because I know who the name of the Father is. And I know what the name of the Son is. I know if he said he's going to send the promise in, the, in my name, I know the name of the Spirit. He said, Pastor, can I get baptized Sunday morning? I, I said, you better believe you can. And when you come up out of that water, you're going to be talking in tongues uh, as the Y'all be seated one more time because I want to really stir something up right here. Because there's a lot of pressure being put on preachers who are having revival. And I hope a lot of them's listening on Holy Ghost Radio. And I hope every one of you right here listening real close and real clear. Number one, John was not talking to sinners When he said, before I'll baptize you or you can get in this water, you have to bring me forth meat showing you've repented. He was not talking to people trying to get saved. He was talking about people looking down their nose thinking they were the only one saved. And the only other place that that scripture is quoted is Paul is standing before Agrippa. And he said, the same people that are falsely accusing me right now are the same people that John pointed to and said, don't worry about who we're baptizing. Uh, Worry about getting your rotten spirit right. And then this is what I challenge every saint, every preacher, every sinner here and around the world. Don't tell me what your pastor taught you growing up. Give me one scripture anywhere in this Bible uh, when after the preaching of the gospel somebody wanted to respond that that preacher looked at them and said 
I just don't think you're there yet. Kind of figured it'd get like this, but I'm a big boy. I will tell you what it says over and over, Brother Bertram. And straight way. Now, it just come to me Sunday night. This, or it was Tuesday night when I was teaching my Bible study. So this ain't Jesus. This is James Wesley. But I got to talking about Philip. He gets put in the wilderness and he sees an Ethiopian official. And it just, it, it, it really did. Brother Sergeant, come to me. I don't believe an Ethiopian official driving around in a chariot with 20s on it you just going to have a hard time convincing me he didn't have no bling bling on. And, and Philip just started preaching to him Jesus from the scripture he had opened up to. And, and they passed by some water. And if there was an ever an opportunity for an apostle to make somebody wait to prove a point to us, it's right here. Because the Ethiopian official, upon hearing the word, he looks at Philip and he says, here is water. Do I need to do anything else before I'm baptized? And the Bible says straightway, Philip and the Ethiopian official went down into the water don't preach the gospel if you don't want somebody to respond to it because when you start preaching this gospel uh, when you start telling people uh, if they can be born again uh, they can have a new life uh, let me tell you I'm through telling you I love you God bless you in Jesus name Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22:16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3, 5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation, to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.